Hey class, Mr. Modine here with a uh, continuation of what we would have covered in class. Uh, we saw last week that a differential equation like this one over here, dy dx equals 2y, uh, can map into a what's called a slope field, a, uh, a set of little gradients that kind of describe what the function is doing by uh, means of its derivative. So uh, you can think of a differential equation as yielding a, uh, a general solution algebraically. So you can use algebra to transform this uh, differential equation into this general solution. And I say general because you have this uh, constant term here, which is uh, you know, just a placeholder for some other uh, value. And visually, that maps to a, uh, a slope field, which is sort of the entire family of functions, uh, you know, sort of simultaneously. Uh, but as soon as you're given a particular point, like for example, uh, if at x equals 3, y is 2, then you have a, a sort of a fixed value through which your function must channel. So you use the slope field as sort of a, a guide to sketch the curve based on its slope on points uh, along the grid so long as you pass through the point 3 comma 2, for example. So that's what's called a, uh, this green curve is called a particular solution. It's, uh, it's basically finding C visually. Now we can combine the, the idea of finding C, which we uh, have in the past have done with indefinite integrals and given a point we can find the particular value of C. Well, that's much the same as what we're going to do here, although a little more complicated. So what we're basically going to do is find the general solution, which we did in class uh, on Monday, and then uh, use a point to then go a step further and say, okay, well, what is the value of C? And that's called the particular solution once you find the value of C. So let's take a look at how this actually works in practice. Here's a problem. Uh, if y prime is equal to negative xy squared over 2 and uh, y at, neg uh, at negative 1, the y value is 2, that's what that says there, then find the particular solution. So keep in mind that this part over here uh, basically describes a slope field. And as soon as you have the point negative 1 comma 2, then you have a curve channeling through that dot that follows the slope field. So how does that work algebraically? Here's how that happens. So I simply wrote this uh, y prime as dy dx here. Uh, it's a little more useful notation. I'm going to multiply both sides by dx through a process what's called separation of variables. So essentially I multiply by dx here, this cancelled, multiply by dx here, and there it is. And I also wrote the one half a little bit differently here, uh, no particular reason why. Uh, I'm going to group my uh, y's with my dy, my x's with my dx, so I'm going to divide both sides by y squared, and when I do that, uh, I have essentially what I wanted. So that's pretty good. I'm going to rewrite this slightly. I'm going to uh, write the left-hand side as y to the negative 2 dy, and basically the right-hand side stays as is, now that the y squared is gone. Since my y's are with dy, my x is with dx, I'm going to uh, integrate both sides, as we have here. And now we just have two separate indefinite integral problems. You'll notice that both of them are uh, variables raised to a power, this being raised to a power of 1. So the left-hand side is simply a direct application of the reverse power rule. So I increment the exponent by 1 to go up to negative 1, then divide it by the same number, plus a constant. The negative 1 half here is a constant uh, multiple, so I'm just going to kind of leave that there for now. Um, x to the first power, which is the exponent here, up by 1 makes it 2, divided by the same number, gives me this part, plus a constant. So the reverse power rule to go from this step to this step. I'm going to simplify here a bit. On the right-hand side, I went ahead and combined negative one-half times sort of a one-half here as well. It gives me, gives me negative one-fourth. And over here, I brought this negative one out front as just a negative sign. And then y to the negative one is one over y, as we've seen with the rules of exponents. And essentially, we have uh, solved for, for y. Uh, sorry, we have uh, found the general solution, uh, albeit not in a very useful form at the moment. I'm going to uh, get my constants together. I'm going to subtract c from both sides, and as we saw, um, that is no, somehow lost a step there. What the next step would read would be uh, basically subtract c and subtract c here, but keep in mind that uh, these could be different c's, so what I, what I have here is negative 1 over y equals uh, all of this just plus c. So I think I have that on the next slide here. There we go. This is uh, what I meant by gathering the c's. Now at this point we have our general solution, so this is the general solution. Um, we could solve this for y, right now it's what's called an implicit function, 
it isn't always a good idea. In fact, let's see if plugging in the point here might allow us to find C, and that might be a, a little more useful. So uh, going, ahead, going ahead and plugging in negative 1 for x right here, and, and 2 right there for y. Uh, negative 1 squared is just going to be positive 1. So that gives me that right there. I'm going to add 1 fourth to both sides to, to cancel out and get C all by itself. And that gives me C equal to uh, negative 1 fourth. So plugging that in gives me what's called a general solution. Oh, sorry, a particular solution. Uh, misspoke there, apologize. It's a particular solution. So in a sense, this is the answer. Um, it's not very clean, though, because y is not solved for. And the, the question really did say solve for, or just find y. So it'd be useful to solve this for y. So picking it up from here, uh, this is the same information. Uh, whoops, I lost my concealer. We make up aficionados. There we go. So that's the last step. Uh, I'm going to notice that all three of these terms are negative, and negatives are a little distracting. So I'm going to actually multiply everything by negative 1. So this becomes positive, this becomes positive, and this becomes positive. And that's a bit nicer. Uh, notice that I have a nice common denominator over here. That's pretty good. So I'm going to combine those together. And if 1 over y is equal to that fraction, x squared plus 1 over 4, then, uh, oops, I don't know why I had that twice. Uh, Apologize. If 1 over y equals this fraction, then plain old y is 4 over x squared plus 1. So I just basically flipped over both fractions. And there you go. There's the uh, particular solution based on the differential equation. Look pretty nice here. Oops. So I said it would look nice. It doesn't look very nice right now. Uh, here you see the um, slope field generated by the differential equation and the particular solution is right now turned off oops that should be a plus one and if I go ahead and turn it on you'll see that it channels through the curve uh, in the slope field and it passes through one comma two as promised so there you go hope this helps